Welcome to this act of worship this morning, St Paul's and St Stephen's, as we gather again online to hear God's word. My name's Justin. Oh, hello, and I'm Lucy. And together we lead St Paul's and St Stephen's down in St Stephen's Church building in Pill. And we'd love to tell you more about it. If you're interested in finding out who we are, we're an Anglican church. Uh, we are quite unusual, quite informal, and we're in the midst of a building refurb during lockdown, which is very exciting. The reason I look a little bit worn out, um, and Mrs. Groves is much fitter than oh, me, yes, that's me, is that we're doing a fundraiser at the moment during Lent. Uh, for funds towards the refurbishment of St Stephen's Church so that we can be um, more effective and a greater blessing to our community. Yeah, we're hoping that um, with all restrictions sort of easing, we might be ready to have people back in the building in time for Easter, which is um, in 40-something no, 40, under 40 days time. No, about 40 days time. So um, that's what we are sort of aiming for. Um, but uh, exciting times and we have quite tired legs. Um, we are trying to bike well, as if we were biking all the way mm. to Jerusalem, which is about 2,882 miles. Uh, we're going around the UK and uh, at various destinations cooking the famous food that is appropriate to that place. So our next stop is Oldham, which, as you all know, they make a thing called rag pudding. Mm. There are various uh, videos and photos on Facebook in particular. That's the easy way to catch up. Do drop us a line, though, if you'd like to know more about us as a church and about the fundraiser. I uh, would love to have your support. Every little bit will help uh, transform not just a building, not just a church, but a community that desperately needs to know the love of God, as everywhere is desperate in these times. Uh, in our community in Pill, we are desperate for an opportunity to show the love and mercy of God uh, to all those that we know and meet. So enjoy the act of worship this morning. Do stay in touch with us. Uh, we haven't said anything about our other service our main act of worship is at 4 30 and it's a little bit more creative and there's craft and it's quite different mm. check that out too maybe okay god bless take care bye So, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace and peace be with you, and keep you in the love of Christ. We've come together this morning as the family of God in our Father's presence to offer him praise and thanksgiving, to hear and to receive his holy word, to bring before him the needs of the world in prayer, and of course to seek his grace, that through his Son, Jesus Christ, we may give ourselves completely to his service. Before we go any further, we're going to make sure that we've said sorry to God. 
Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Listen, Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Now we keep a moment's silence where we just call to mind the things that we do need to confess and things that we need to tell God that we're sorry for, the things that have hurt our relationship with him and our relationship with each other, those around us and often those that we care about the most. So let us confess our sins to Almighty God and please join in if you know these words. Almighty God and merciful Father, we have sinned against you in thought, in word and in deed. We've not loved you with all our heart and we've not loved others as Christ loves us. We are truly sorry. In your mercy, forgive us. Help us to amend our lives that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Mark chapter 1 verses 9 to 15. At that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming out, out of the water he saw heaven being torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove and a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love with you I am well pleased. At once the Spirit sent him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness forty days, being tempted by Satan. He was with the wild animals, 
and the angels attended him. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. May the words of my mouth and the thoughts of all our hearts be ever acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Here we are again, the start of Lent, the start of the journey towards Easter. Normally, we'd be considering what it might be helpful to give up, what it might be helpful to take up, in what would already be quite full lives, lives which maybe do need a little bit of stripping back to enable us to concentrate on what's important. Maybe that's still the case. But however, we've had to live through an abnormally exceptional year. And in many ways it does feel quite reasonably that we have in many senses already been forced to spend the year giving up many things and having to forgo so much already. So this Lent is quite difficult in many ways to consider giving up something when we've already and we are already not leaving home, haven't left home for many of us for, for some time apart from the odd bit of shopping and exercise if you've been good enough to do that. We've also not been able to see friends. We're not able to meet together for worship. So, as we start trying to think about Lent and disciplines, it's against that background when, instead of the fullness of our lives kind of overwhelming what we should consider as we journey towards Easter, we're struck instead with intense senses of loss, some more so than others, because it's been a year when many people have lost friends and loved ones too early. So where does this kind of leave us when we're looking at today's Gospel? Well, one of the things that actually came to my mind was we've often spoken in the past about what would Jesus do? The whole WWJD, people have got little wristbands, badges, things that hang round their, their neck and all kinds of bits and pieces posing the question, what would Jesus do? And to me that seems to be quite a good place to start. Now, those of, us, those of you who were with us on Thursday evening would have heard Justin make a start in the Church Bible study on this very passage, which is our Gospel reading for this morning. The baptism of Jesus and the beginning of his earthly ministry. So what I want us to do is to just start thinking about that a little bit. And I'm going to come back to how we should be viewing and how we should be journeying through this Lent. Jesus had listened to God. He did this throughout his whole ministry. We regularly see him taking time out to go and commune with God. 
his relationship to God was intensely important. It was essential for the journey he was on. So he listened to God and he obeyed the plan that God had revealed to him. And where that took him now was to go to John and make the public act of being baptised by John. Now, in our story, what we see is then God declaring that he is well pleased with his son. And it's important to think about and realise what it was that he was well pleased with Jesus about. And it was about Jesus doing the right thing. Obeying the plan which God had shown to him as the way for him at that point. So just remember that. Now, having obeyed God's will for him, he's then led by the Holy Spirit to a period of testing. Now, it's that period of testing which Lent remembers. Now, we don't make a big thing of going through all the tests which Jesus underwent, and actually they're not listed here in Mark. Mark just states that this took place. But, and importantly the but, now Jesus was going through a difficult time here, and we know when we look at the Gospels again, that we see each time Jesus was finding things difficult, he again turned to God to ask him, what's the way forward? What do you want of me at this point? How do I go forward? What's the next thing to do? And the but was that angels attended him. Then we see Jesus starts his earthly ministry. Now, I think in many ways this short reading is also a mirror of our story as Christians. God had been laying out his plan for each and every one of us from our births. Now, we may not always have been aware of it, but he had been calling us and leading us through different people and however your journey took place. Because what he wanted us to do was to become his children. So as I say, whenever that happened in your life, at whatever point you became a Christian, at that point you became a child of God. And God was again well pleased with his child, with you. And from that point on, he had a plan. We had an earthly ministry to exercise. And God needs us to keep in touch with him so that we know what that is and how that works out. We're called like Jesus was to declare that the kingdom of God has come near and that people need to repent and believe the good news. Now, in doing that, in many ways, that's more where our testing comes from, where our metal has to be proven. Now, as the Queen once declared, what's past has been an annus horribilis. It's not been a good time. It's not been an easy time in the past year. But at the end of the day, this is just part of the journey that God has called us on to be with him. He's not left us in this. He's still there with us. And we were called as we became Christians into relationship with God. And the purpose of that relationship is the journey. The journey that we're called on day by day 
to be transformed and changed so that we became more like Jesus, that we become more like Jesus. At the end of the day, we are practising Christians. We've not got it right yet, and it may be a while before we do. But that's not the important thing. The important thing is the journey. So as we now are journeying again towards Easter, we need to show and demonstrate God's love to those we come in contact with. Now, there's some words which I've used before, and I'm going to use again now, which were published a number of years ago. They're words of St. Francis about fasting in Lent. And it puts a very different take on the kind of fasting that we think of, where we give up food or chocolate or something like that. It instead talks about things we can fast from, which do show God's love. Now I'm hoping that we'll, I will, quite soon after this message goes up as part of our service, add this on YouTube and also put them on our Facebook page. So the words which Pope Francis said, and it's worth listening to these carefully, because they are about transforming our human character into Jesus' character, which is what we're called to do. And if we're able to do that, and do that to the people around us, we will be showing the heart of God. Fast from hurting words and say kind words. Fast from sadness and be filled with gratitude. Fast from anger and be filled with patience. Fast from pessimism and be filled with hope. Fast from worries and have trust in God. Fast from complaints and contemplate simplicity. Fast from pressures and be prayerful. Fast from bitterness and fill your hearts with joy. Fast from selfishness and be compassionate to others. Fast from grudges and be reconciled. Fast from words and be silent so you can listen. So, let us pray. Dear Lord, as we journey through Lent to Easter, we pray that we will allow you to transform us so that we become, day by day, more like Jesus, that we can better show your love in the world and enable your kingdom to come here on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Say the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds 
from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Okay, God, we ask for your hurting world, a world struggling in isolation and a separation and unable to see those that we love. God, we ask for your comfort to come in place in difficult times. Although we thank you for the hope that we have um, in you, uh, both for the newness of life um, and this time of, of coming into Lent, we also yeah, realise that it's also time to take seriously um, all you're doing and to recognise all that Jesus gave up so that we could come to know you. God, we ask for your comfort in difficult times. Uh, we ask for your persecuted church as well, that you'd be comforting them um, in, in some places where life can become more difficult to follow you. Um, we pray for our own leadership as well, that you give them wisdom as to how to lead us through um, difficult times. We pray for our royal family, for Prince Philip, um, who, who is hospitalised this week, and we ask that you'll be uh, getting him out of hospital shortly. Um, and we thank you for that you are the God of all comfort, who gets us through all difficult times. Amen. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, Amen.